Well, hello everybody, it's Sandy, and it's time for another Monday sun Summer of Stamping video. And today I'm gonna to be working on some florals. These are two new florals by Brandy, and they're so beautiful. I did one in Copic and one in watercolor, and I'm gonna tackle them both in a super fast video. Two new florals designed by Brandy are on deck this week. And the one on the left is called You Should Know. The one on the right is uh, Mondo Pansies. And they both have tons of sentiments. One is a little more cartoony. The other is a little bit more on the realistic side. And this first one is the Mondo Pansy that I'm going to stamp in a bunch of different directions. And they fit really well together to make an all over background, which was a nice surprise. Sometimes stamps don't quite fit and you end up with weird gaps. I did not end up with any. And my watercolor paper is full of flowers. And that's stamped in Versafine Onyx Black ink. And I mixed up some quinacridone rose because I wanted some pink flowers. And I just started painting them so that I would leave a little bit of white around the outside edges of each one because I wanted to have some brightness in there. But I want to keep them really loose. The brush that I'm using is one that I showed you a while back in my brushes video, the Rot Martyr brushes. It's kind of a synthetic blend that's different than the silver brushes that I normally use. It is softer than them, but it puts out color the way that that you get sometimes from, from some of the synthetic brushes instead of as much like the the expensive brushes that I told you about in that video. So um, I kind of like it because it gives me a little softer look, but it also has a little more control. It's kind of a 50-50 mix to me. So I painted them and then I dropped in some of the Perylene Maroon. Perylene Maroon is a color that looks kind of like poop if you paint, by its, paint it by itself. The color is not very pretty, but when you mix it with something else, it gives some variance to it. So it gave the Quinacridone Rose some variants just by dropping in color. And then I mixed up some straight up serpentine green to paint the entire background, leaving those nice white areas so I'd have some little, little pop of the white in between and painted all of these areas in while it's wet. And that was a really easy way to paint them. You could certainly leave them just like that, but I decided I would dry it all up and then mix a dark color. And I'm using sap green with green appetite and then perylene green. And it's the same kind of thing. Perylene green is kind of a ook color by itself, but it mixes with other colors really nicely. When I mixed up this color, I bet you started thinking that I was going to be painting the leaves in that color. And you could certainly do that, make the leaves dark. And I thought it would be fun to do a turnaround of what people would naturally think and paint the outside of the leaves so that I have a really dark background and really light leaves instead. And in order to do something like this and not leave all kinds of lines where the paint dries, it's helpful when you have all these little lines from the, the background, all these little stems, mm -hmm. because you can paint in each section and then each section acts as a border unto itself and then you don't end up with lines all over the place. And that was all there was to it. I just painted that in and then added a sentiment, a couple layers of paper and made it a really simple and beautiful card. Now the other stamp set, I do something a little crazy with. And you know, sometimes I just have to go crazy and that's the way it is. I did something similar to this with a Grey Muse stamp set, oh, maybe a month ago or so. And people were fascinated with it and asked me, how did I do that? So I'm going to do that to this stamp set. And I'm starting off a little slower with this first flower. So if you're looking for how to color a flower, just follow this first one. All the other flowers are basically the same. I'm using RV04 for the base color. This is an RV99, which is a very dark, very desaturated red. And then we've got an RV69, which is less desaturated. So it's got a little more redness to it, but it's nine. So it's still really dark. And the third color that I'm going to throw in here is not going to be a, a medium tone. It's going to be another dark, but it's an RV09. So it's got a lot of saturation to it. It's brighter, but it's still a nine. 
so it's going to be darker. So brighter, I guess, in terms of saturation as opposed to the color itself. And I'm leaving very, very, very little of that original pink. And I'm just going to knock everything else back and make it all much darker. Now you can go back in a little bit with the very light, the RV04, and soften some areas, that sort of thing. I am going to be adding a whole lot to it, but that's basically how you color one of these flowers. And you could do the whole thing. The stamp, I stamped twice on here using some no-line ink. So I stamped it once on the left and once on the right, nestling them together, but knowing that I wanted to do this background thing with it. So I just started running around doing the flowers same way, using the same colors, the dark in the center, and then moving out from there with that less dark color, and then with the, uh, the RV09, and then blending that out a little bit with the lightest pink, that RV04. Same procedure as the first flower. I was probably a little less tidy with it because that one flower is only the only one that's really going to be standing out in a major way was what it was in my head. So I left more linear lines in that one, a little more detail, because the rest of this is gonna disappear. So I colored in all the leaves that were stamped on there and then started doing my own thing in the background. And this is called negative coloring. And normally I do like negative painting and there's different techniques to do that. But when you're doing negative coloring, just put some shapes down and then we're gonna be knocking them all back deeper and deeper into the drawing. I'm going to start by putting the darkest places of the drawing in there first, which is black in between everything, and just going around and outlining them. And this is one of the cool things, if I drew one of my leaves funky or one of my flowers funky, this is a great place to just whack off an edge of something if it came out looking weird, or if you decided you had too many leaves, which I will do in a few minutes, and you just don't want that much in there, you can just cover them up with the black. Really simple to do. But the flowers that I drew out there, they didn't matter if they were crooked because they're all going to just disappear after I get this done. So knocked a few more leaves out of there because I wanted to have a couple empty spaces. And then went in with my really dark, dark RV99 and started pushing some of those flowers to the back and then started pushing leaves to the back and just layering different greens in here. And you could layer a ton of different greens. I was trying to sort of pull them all together with a couple of greens that I used almost everywhere so they'd have the same flavor of green but they've all got different colors in them since I use so many so there's also nice variation and here I just keep knocking different petals back into the background and one by one you can just almost see that some of them pull to the front and some of them are just pushed back into the background so that's how you do that. I know like very few people are going to try this. So I figured I'll just do a speed coloring so you can see how it's done. And I do have some other videos here on YouTube. I'll see if I can find them and link them in the doobly doo below with a similar kind of technique. All right, that is it for me today. Go check out the Ellen Hudson blog because she's got lots more uh, projects and things that lots of the designers have shown with these particular stamps and you're gonna to wanna to see them and decide if you need these in your collection. I'll see you guys later, bye.